Club. But I'm glad it's over and I didn't have any, we had no symptoms. Everyone was, me and Sister Smith both, just been doing fine, thank the Lord. We certainly do need to pray for, I guess you all heard Brother Gene Werther in Decatur, Illinois, passed away the day before yesterday with COVID. And um, Brother Mark Marler in Oklahoma City had a stroke yesterday and is paralyzed, or at least when I read it, he had no function on his right side. So we certainly need to keep them in our prayers. Brother Gary Green, Sister Green, both have COVID. And uh, they actually they actually took that ivermectin and uh, when they started with symptoms and and uh, thank you. Did you get yourself one? <laughs> um, and they're doing pretty good. So far, so good. I mean, they're uh, neither one of them have taste or smell. They've both been tested positive. His mother, I'm not sure if she lives with them. I'm not sure if she's been tested, but she has all the same symptoms they have. So we sure need to keep them posted. Brother Larry Bryant's got COVID. Karen and Curtis Golden's got COVID. There's about eight people in the Wichita church that have it. So their services are closed today and Wednesday night. And, and then there are innumerable outbreaks in Houston church that I think that church is closed down for right now also. So we certainly need to pray uh, for keep it in our prayers. You know, I think it's <clears throat> just, it seems like, you know, uh, I think we're still 1.6 in Arkansas, which is about normal with the nation. 1.6 people percent get that die that get it. So it's a very small amount, but it looks like great numbers when you look at the population. And then <clears throat> I read where if you're over 65, there's 15% people over 65 don't survive it. Still, there's an 85% chance that you will, but anyway, I don't want to get it. <laughs> uh-huh. Brother Don Benfield has it. Yes, that's right. I'm sorry I missed that. Failed to mention it. So, you know, there's, there's several people have it. I, I, uh, you know, I don't know. Yeah, we may be leaving people out, but I'm trying to tell you everything I know. Um, a few weeks ago, I mentioned to you I was going to talk on iniquity and. And I, I, I hope we can get through this today. It's, it's quite a bit of information, but I think it's important, you know, because I think in the body of Christ, we have been, we've had the mindset that iniquity is primarily working division and rebellion against the order of God. And uh, I want to explain the iniquity better so you'll have a better understanding of it. So, I made out these papers for you so you won't have to be thumbing through your Bible so much. You can, you can look at it later if you want to. The first page is printed on the front and the back. And then the last page is just the front page because there is no more. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> Psalms 32 and 5 says, I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Selah. Selah means think about it. Think about it. Meditate on this. It seems here that sin and iniquity are two different things. This shows he forgave both his iniquity and his sin. 
Which came first, the chicken or the egg? <laughs> Iniquity or sin? Isaiah 53, 6. All we like sheep have gone astray and have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him, that is Jesus, the going astray and turning to our own way. I added that just to or iniquity of us all. The Lord hath laid on him, Jesus, the, the iniquity of us all, or the going astray and turning to our own way. Oh, here the prophet Isaiah identifies going astray and going our own way as iniquity. Uh, iniquity is not the result of going our own way. The result is sin. Uh, Proverbs 16, 25 says, There is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And you all know I've used this scripture in Psalms 119, 1 through 3, many times to show that iniquity is doing your own thing, doing your own will. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Which is a strong indication that if you're not walking in the, in the Lord's ways, then you're committing iniquity. Isaiah 53, 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. <clears throat> then Psalms 32. I know I've, you know the scripture that shows that you're blessed not to, that God doesn't impute sin. But here he says, Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity. Um, I'll make this statement more here in a minute, but um, iniquity uh, iniquity is is operating in your own will, operating outside of the ways of God. It actually <coughs> is the carnal fallen nature of man when you walk in that nature and it's going to iniquity I'd have to say iniquity is not sin it's the sin nature and iniquity the result of iniquity sin you are going to, you know if you walk in your own way you're going to commit sin and without accomplishing this new nature and developing in it you're not going to be able to keep from sinning because you're in a sinful nature. But that nature is an iniquitous nature. Um, let's read some more scriptures because these scriptures, I think, prove what I'm saying. Isaiah 53, 5. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities and chastised. I read that. Verse 32. Uh, I've already have I read that? Blessed is the man whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity. Isaiah 55. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So, now, now you, if you read that and you get to thinking... Well, you know, I don't think like God. I can't think like God. He thinks much higher than me. That's true in, in a, in, as far as a man's fallen nature is concerned. But God does want you to learn his thoughts. He wants you to learn his ways. He wants you to develop in that. <laughs> then, I, I, I put this in here. Is pride sin? Or is it a way we can walk? that will eventually cause us to sin. Let's look at the scripture. In, 
Ezekiel 16, 49 and 50, it says, Behold, this was the iniquity of thy, of thy sister Sodom. Pride, fullness of bread, abundance of idleness was in her and in her daughters. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy, and they were haughty and committed abomination before me. Therefore I took them away as I saw good. Maybe should have said as I saw it good. Iniquity is not just rebellion against order, causing division and working against those who are over, the, over us in the Lord. Iniquity is doing our own will and not the will of God. But pride, here's what iniquity is. It's pride, fullness of bread. That is, what's your appetite? You know, what's, what's doing your own will? What, it, what, what is your appetite uh, causing you to do in the flesh? Abundance of idleness, both spiritual and natural. Neglect, haughtiness. I'd have to say that includes pride. Uh, or pride causes haughtiness. As David said in Psalms 130 and 3, if thou, if thou Lord, should mark, iniquities or if you should consider who all is iniquitous who shall stand <clears throat> uh, I, I um, you know the, the word iniquity God's dealt with me a long time about it and um, it wasn't until oh I don't know, maybe a month or two ago, maybe a couple months ago. Uh, Brother Strike called me, Brother Dale Strike. And he's never been a real vocal man in the general meetings, but he's always, you know, he wrote the Ites of the Land. He's, he's wrote several articles over the years. It's been uh, really good articles. And um, he called me one day. He said, I'd like to have permission to send you something. I don't know if he heard me mention it or what, but he said, I wrote an article on iniquity several years ago. And he said, I really kind of had forgotten it. And um, so he said, then a sister in my church told me recently, whenever it was he told me about it, that she had got that article out and been reading it. And she said, Brother Strike, this, is, this article is really helping me. And so he said, I'd like to, uh, he said, if you give me permission, I'd like to send it to you. But anyway, we got to talking on, you know, he said, you know, you're one of the few guys I've talked to that doesn't look at iniquity or that sees it the way I see it. And I said, well, send me the article. I'd like to read it. I'd like to have more on it. And so, so some of this I, I, uh, I gleaned from Brother Strite. I just thought it, it, it just adds a lot more scripture. Uh, some of them's my scriptures, but some of them's his. And, um, but I just think it, it brings a good rounded understanding of iniquity. Now, what I said about iniquity causing division and rebellion against authority is true. That's part of that. Uh, iniquity causes that. The, the iniquity of us all, uh, you know, when we do our own will, we're going to be against God. And, and um, we may learn how to do uh, work in order, uh, and, but, it, but it may not be a part of our will. You know, God has to help us. God has to help us work that in us. So let's, let's go on. <clears throat> um, most don't recognize our iniquities. It's much easier to recognize our resulting sins. God deals with our sins first, which causes us to repent, and are then willing to do good, but we can't seem to accomplish it. Philippians 2.13 says, For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. In other words, God, it's going to take God to help every one of us to get rid of our iniquitous ways, our, you know, our, our fleshly ways, 
our mindset that's against the thoughts of God. And uh, so iniquity is a big, it's the whole piece of pie of man's ways. And then there's all kinds of pieces of the pie that, that uh, results in all kinds of sin. Um, uh, it, it takes the new nature, I said, to accomplish true righteousness. Iniquity is our way or our will, and that's the old man or fallen nature. We're learning to do His will by yielding and being trained up in the Holy Ghost nature, in parentheses, new man, our new creature. Iniquity is the tree, and sin is the fruit. If you look at it that way, it may help you understand it, that, you know, uh, that we're, uh, sin is the result of iniquity. As I said, Hebrews 10, 17, uh, I got through 17. Uh, it's probably just that particular verse. Somebody look that up and we'll figure that out. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts and in their minds will I write them. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Oh, <clears throat> again, he's, he's showing there's, there's two things here in the covenant the new covenant that uh, was prophesied in, in uh, I think, wasn't that in Jeremiah 31? Uh, that I'll make with them after those days, that I'll put my laws in their hearts and in their minds will I write them. And their sins and iniquity will I remember no more. In other words, once God gets worked righteousness in us, in this new nature, there's there, then there won't be any more iniquity once God's written this in our minds. That's and in our hearts. In other words, once it's part of our character to do the will of God, we won't do iniquity. We won't do our own will. But the reason we can't accomplish once we repent of our sins and we want to do good, but we it's like Paul said, there's there's a law in my members. I can't. I can't seem to accomplish doing good. And, and uh, to find out why, uh, let's read a little bit more. Leviticus 40 through 41. That was just the 17th verse, by the way. 16 and 17? Okay, good. So you might want to change that first 17 to 16. If they shall confess their iniquity... And the iniquity of their fathers with the trespass which they trespassed against me, and that also they have walked contrary to me, and that I also have walked contrary to them, and have brought them in the land of their enemies. If then their uncircumcised hearts be humbled, and they then accept the punishment of their iniquity, Okay, I'm going to give you seven steps out of that scripture that w will help you with in iniquity. If they've confessed their iniquity, think of at least of one of the ways that you know is not pleasing to the Lord. For an example, when someone is in opposition to something I've said or done, I react in anger, or at least the sound of anger. I'll tell you, when, when I begin to study about this, um, it was actually when I really began to look at it, it was, I woke up about 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning. I was in my recliner, which I sleep in a lot in the, in the, in the living room, because I have this sinus that if I lay down, it fills my head up. So I was a lot of times just sleep in the recliner. So my head won't fill up with fluid this time of year when pollen's real high anyway. Seemed like it's been that time of year ever since the beginning of the year. <laughs> anyway, it you know, it works on your mind with all this COVID going on, your head starts filling up, and you think, Oh God, you know. Um so this um, 
the first step is if they confess their iniquity. I was going to tell you when I woke up and started studying this. I just got so broke up. I didn't hardly know what to do with myself. I just thought, God, I'm such a mess. I just, I just seen, I just saw the iniquity in my life. You know, doing my own will, doing my ways. Things that I do that are, you know, I can justify it, but it's not the right spirit, and I know it. You know, you can hide it. Uh, but to have to face it, and to be able to face it enough that you can confess your iniquity, that you can confess the things that you're doing in your own way, your own will, and you know it's not God's will. Second step, and confess the iniquity of their fathers. How many have said, I'm not going to do what my mom, my dad or mom did that I knew was wrong, but you kept yourself doing it. We tend to do what has been put before us by parents, leaders, and those who have influence over us. See, when you really begin to see the condition of fallen man and you really begin to confess there's things been planted in me that I'm doing that, that I was influenced to do. Even, even in the body, you know, I, now I would look at this different than probably most of y'all would because in the body, I'm looking at uh, back several years ago. It may have been in, I, I don't remember what year it was, when Brother Billy Brown got up at the campground and, and told us we needed to repent for the sins of our fathers. Um, you know, and and of course I know more now even than I did then when he brought it up, what he was working on, that we need to realize that there's been things planted in us that we, you know, even as much as we love this body and this message and our vision and our forefathers that has brought us to where we're at, we're not where we're where our vision is to take us. And if we keep doing everything, you all probably heard that saying, if we keep doing what we've always done, we'll always be what we've always been. You, you, we, you're going to have to realize that everything we've done hadn't been right. It's brought us to where we're at, and it's part of God's working plan. But there's things that's been planted in us you know, that uh, I was praying the other day, and I asked the Lord. I said, I was read, I've been reading some in the prophets. And these prophets would raise up in Israel and prophesy against the priesthood and against Israel, leaders of Israel. And I asked God, I said, if, if somebody rose up and prophesied against something we're doing wrong in the body, could we accept it? Would we consider it or we would just be defensive and that who do you think you are telling us, you know, or could we, under, could we know that God is talking to us? They're pointing out some things that we need to consider that, are, that do, do need to be corrected. I'm not saying that we need that. I'm just, you know, I mean, but I've been in, you know, I've been in this 43 years now and I can just tell you right now, I've heard men since I've been in here get up and work us over the coals. And I thought, who do you think you are? You know, you're a pipsqueak getting up here telling these great men. <laughs> I wonder how many people in Israel thought Jeremiah, Hosea, Micah, Haggai, you know, Ezekiel, uh, Isaiah. I wonder how many of them guys thought, who do you think you are? You're just an old prophet running around running your mouth. <laughs> I don't know how many people may have thought that. I don't know how many feared those men, you know. But, um, and and I think that needs a lot of qualification. So I'm certainly not advocating that, but I am trying to look at the full scope of God's dealings and what God 
may and may not be saying to us. So, um, anyway, um, okay, so the sins of our fathers. We need to realize that whether it, it was our natural fathers, our spiritual fathers, and of course, you know, this sort of even opens things up to say, like for an example, I sat under a man, I think y'all know who he is, I'd rather not call his name, uh, was just a great man and a great leader in the body of Christ. I sat under him for a certain period of time, and that man left the body. That man began to work wrong. He definitely worked iniquity. But I don't focus on those things. I recognize what he did, and I know what he did certainly can't be allowed even in my thinking. But I glean many good things from him. I'll go as far as to say this. I was telling my wife on the way to church this morning concerning Brother Jolly, T.M. Jolly. I most of you probably do know that Brother Jolly was not only judged by the ministry, the ministry that was he had under him. Uh, there was a separation in the body in 1965 because of uncovered immorality, and and he finally was judged by the law. But, you know, he was judged in the court of the land for immorality and sentenced for it. But he built something into those men that were under him that is undefiably this message and things of God. And all of those men that I know anything about are clean men. I was telling my wife, I said, the only way I can even think to calculate all that in my mind is he admitted to his men in the end, he said, I, I've had a problem that I can't conquer. I've tried to conquer it. I thought I had it under control, but I couldn't. It, it would get the best of me. And in my mind, the only way I've been able to calculate all of this is to think that he must have been something like David that really hit true repentance with godly sorrow and that he had a heart to serve God and that God would forgive him and God would work with him. One of the things you've got to realize is, is that, and it did eventually happen, when God did finally bring judgment, it destroyed hundreds of souls. And I'm sure God was trying to save as much of all of what he could save. There's certain things about it you just can't calculate. But, but anyway, I'm just bringing that up to show that, that uh, you know, God did, God used this man, and, and he used his gift his gift continued to work. The only way I could see that would that would work would be that he actually hit a place in repentance that God accepted. Finally, though, God said, "I'm I'm I'm done, and I'm going to uncover you, and I'm going to it's going to cost hundreds of souls, but it's got to be judged." And finally, it did happen. Um, you know, so. God is a merciful God. He, there's no question about it. He's merciful and tries to save. And sometimes you just wonder, could you nip this in the bud in the beginning? You know, but evil develops in, in men sometimes of great stature, and then it requires a lot of wisdom to deal with it. I'm not trying to justify that, man. Believe me. I, 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 I'm against everything that, took place and and it is it was iniquity and the result of it was horrible sin and so uh, it, it has to be judged it, it should not be tolerated which it wasn't tolerated by the men that knew for sure knew about it and 
And that's what brought the division. Men that for sure knew about it could not continue with it. And that's why they sought God. And these brethren, from where you and I came, uh, were led of God to continue on to have meetings without being a part of all of that. The people that didn't know if it was true or not, they they continue on believing it was a lie. What was what was told them that had been uncovered. Anyway, let's get off of that and get back to iniquity. But but anyway, that is a a part of how iniquity works, even in great places. Um, the sins of our fathers. The reason I brought that up confessing the iniquity of our fathers I, in other words um, I, I think sometimes being willing to confess it you know being willing to say I know it was wrong even though I loved this man even though I loved the man I was under uh, or I loved my father or my mother but I know she had faults and they were planted in me and I I'm I catch myself doing what I said I'd never do. Well, I've told you before that was planted in you and a principle of why not to ever do it. You just never got that principle to correct it. That's why you keep doing it. Step three, third step with their trespass, that is, with their sin, confess the iniquity and their trespass, which they trespassed against me. That's the sin that results from our iniquity or our own ways. Confess it. You know, I, I don't ne I'm not necessarily saying you need to confess it to me. I mean, we're not having a confession here today. I don't have a booth for you to come in and tell me through a screen door and darkness what you've done that you need to confess that's not going to help you very much the confession might help you but if you confess it to God and sometimes you may need to confess it to the one you've sinned against if it's been against somebody that you need forgiveness for from them um, the fourth step and they also walked contrary to me it's necessary to confess. I've been against God. Say it. It doesn't feel good, does it? You start from your heart. You really start saying, God, I'm, I've been against you. I've worked against you. My whole nature's against you. I'm, I'm trying to get out of it. <clears throat> I, what I'm trying to say here is, is that until you really see yourself, it's hard to correct yourself and I, I here's something I believe I believe that you can you can conquer I had somebody tell me recently said we can live above sin right now but we can't reach perfection I, I can't agree with that I don't think you can live above the sin nature that is going to absolutely cause you that nature is going to result in certain sins until you get to the place that you don't have any nature in you. That, But you can conquer certain things that God's worked in you that gave you enough knowledge, enough strength, enough help that you've got, you've got these sins put under. I'm not giving you a license to sin. I'm saying you you keep willing to do God's will and you keep willing not to sin, but there's going to be things that's going to happen that you're you're going to be like a Paul. There's a there's a law in your members that's that. How did Paul say that? Let's let's get it where we we'll just read it in. Uh, uh, that's the seventh chapter of Romans. Uh, let's read it right quick. It may help. To... Yeah. 
7.21, Romans 7.21. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. That's once he was born again of the Holy Ghost. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity of the law which is in my members. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with my, the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, I serve our, the law of sin. That's exactly what I'm saying is taking place. That's, that is iniquity. This, this law in our members is iniquity. And it produces a lot of sin. Um, so, uh, I'm, I'm just using this scripture in, uh, in Le, uh, Leviticus here to, uh, to show you, I'm just breaking it, we're just breaking it down in these steps. Four steps. And they also walked contrary to me. No, I already read that part. Okay, the fifth step. Go to the fifth step. <clears throat> and that I, and, and, and that I, that is God, also have walked contrary unto them by withholding blessings, giving correction, and even chastisement. Also I reap what I sow both naturally and spiritually. I can't reap the blessings of righteousness if I don't sow it in righteousness. So God, God, God is against us even if we're his child, but we're not doing his will. We're coming against his will. We're working against him. It causes him to have to work against us. It's just like your children. Your children goes against you or does things that you've commanded them not to do then you are against that. And you, you have to uh, correct them of that. You may have to go beyond just, you know, uh, you may have to chastise them for them. Sometimes, you know, I think we have to consider, like the Bible says, uh, to, for us to, in the day of adversity, consider. Is God judging me? Is God chastising me? Is this the correction of God? Is this coronavirus a judgment? Is God bringing judgment on the world? You'd be a fool not to believe that. It ain't just happening. Ain't, was World War II a judgment of God? Sure it was. Was God dealing with the world? Was he dealing with America? Is he dealing with America now? He's dealing with the whole world, but... It's affecting the body of Christ. Is he, is, he affecting, is he dealing with the body of Christ? Sure he is. We need to consider. It's a time for us to consider our ways. It's, it's time to consider what causes us to do what we're doing. How are we going to get out of here? How do we get out of this situation? Oh, wretched man that I am. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? It's going to bring death. I thank God... Through Jesus Christ, our Lord is the only answer. Um, then the sixth step. And have brought them into the land of their enemies. Sometimes the Lord lets our own ways or iniquity take us into trouble. We create most of our, our own problems and don't even realize it. It takes us into the land of our enemies. In other words, when we're doing our own will, we find ourselves causing a trouble. And God lets us get in that trouble to learn a lesson. Sometimes you can see, I, I went the wrong road and I'm fixing to get in trouble. And sometimes you can repent to God and God will help you get out of trouble even though you don't deserve it. <laughs> But he'll let you escape the chastisement of it if you see it, if it's deep enough that, God, I see what I've done wrong and I really am, have a godly sorrow. Godly sorrow 
Um, what did Paul say? That godly sorrow worketh repentance that need not be repented of. You don't need to repent when you really hit a godly sorrow. When God, you know, I could convince you that you've done something wrong. In fact, that's one of my own ways that I have to work on. Because I can deal with you. You know, I'm, I've become a scholar at it. I can work on people in such a way that I can beat them down to a pulp and make them feel terrible. But that's not godly sorrow. That's just sorrow that Brother Smith's beating me up. <laughs> so I'm trying now, I'm trying to learn how to wait on God to bring godly sorrow. I can preach or teach and talk about the 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 operation of God in your life and and help you to see what sin and iniquity is, but if God don't bring godly sorrow, it's not going to accomplish very much. That's why, you know, you see all these people in these revivals, preachers get up and start telling them, hey, you may die tonight, you're going to go straight to hell if you don't get to these altars and let God save you of your souls. And he scares the hell out of them. And they run to the altar and repent of their sins and they may get a touch from God, but it really wasn't godly sorrow. And so in two days they're right back to doing what they was doing before because it didn't stick. Um, now, there's two things God's watching for here in this scripture. And when we confess the first six steps, Leviticus 26, 41 said, if then their uncircumcised hearts be humbled. If the Lord see that we through our confession of our iniquity and sins are truly humbled, then he looks for the last thing, the seventh step. Then accept of the punishment of their iniquity, the consequences which they brought without blaming others or God and truly accept and realizing our iniquity has resulted in our sins that have brought those consequences whether by reaping or what we have sown or the Lord's chastising. God, that's what God's looking for. Is, is He's looking to see is there really any true humility here? Have it, has it really brought you to humility? And do you really see why you, and do you accept that you're the one that brought this upon yourself and this is why God's had to chastise you or why you've reaped what you've sown and why, and you, can, you accept the punishment are the consequences of what God has had to work in your life. It just really brings us down to where the rubber meets the road. Then <clears throat> Hebrews 12, let me read that, having to do with this. 6 through 11 says, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son who he, whom he receiveth. That includes daughters. If you endure chastising, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth, chasteneth not? But if you be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are you bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh, which corrected us and gave us and gave them rever and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure. But he for our profit that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them that are exercised thereby. If we accept those consequences, then God makes a peculiar promise to us. Leviticus 26, 42a 
It says, Then will I remember my covenant with Jacob, and also my covenant with Isaac, and also my covenant with Abraham will I remember. These are in reverse order where everywhere else in the Bible it's Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Here it's, it's put in opposite order. It's in, you almost have to think there's a reason God did it that way. Jacob starts off with Jacob, who had the right heart for God's inheritance, but had to be confer, converted from a trickster to Israel. His name was changed from Jacob to Israel, which means to rule like God, and to rule like God or learn God's ways, to learn how God rules. Isaac was a miracle child and a picture of a new man, the new nature, that only came through the right woman. This is a picture of the bride and the body of Christ. It, has to, it takes the right woman to bear this miracle child. After trying to produce through our bringing about our Ishmaels by our own ways, our iniquity. See, Abraham and Sarah went about their own way to try to fulfill God's ways and produced Israel, Ishmael, which was not the promised child, and God, God would not allow that to be who he promised Abraham would have as a son in Isaac. Then Abraham our father of faith, back to our beginning, our first love, where we are willing to forsake all and follow the Lamb in his ways, whithersoever he goeth. Um, and that's, you know, important that we get back to our first love. I think we need to ring that over you know that's the first of the seven letters in the book of revelation the seven letters that were written to what was it ephesus smyrna pergamos uh, thyatira sardis philadelphia and lastly laodicea those seven churches i believe were literal seven churches but I think they were prominent churches in Asia, which were there were many churches in Asia. Seven's a complete number. I think the Lord said, here's these seven letters to you seven churches. Here's seven prominent things wrong with y'all. It'll fit everybody in, in Asia. Because they didn't just get those, they got all seven letters. They got the whole book, the whole book of Revelation. They all were able to read it. They were all able to know what God was identifying as their iniquity and their sin along with the promise to he that overcometh would make the bride. I left one, one last thing off. If you want to write it, you can. In uh, Leviticus 26.41 brought them into the land of their enemies. Let's just real quick, I'll give you this last scripture. Leviticus uh, 26.41 And they also walked contrary their ways and brought them into the land of their iniquities and then their uncircumcised hearts be troubled and accept the punishment of their iniquity. Then will I remember my covenant with Jacob and also my covenant with Isaac and also my covenant with Abraham will I remember. And I will remember the land. You may want to write that down. I'll remember the land. God will not forget his promise of eternal life. The land. Paradise. The, the new earth. Everlasting life. God would not forget that if we will overcome our iniquity. I hope I've made myself clear that iniquity is not just working rebellion and division in the church. Iniquity is the old nature. It's doing your own will and your own ways. And the result of iniquity is sin.
in many different categories and working division and rebellion against the order of God is one of them but it's certainly not the only one so I just wanted to give you a little bit clearer picture of what God's worked on me about iniquity I think it's important for us to have a good understanding of iniquity and I don't think we've used it in its fullness to really understand it so I hope you know I put I don't always do this I know that but I put it in writing so that maybe you can go back and study it and read it and maybe because we had to cover so much material I could probably take any one of these steps maybe and preach an hour sermon on it <laughs> I, I, I think I could accomplish that it, but it you know but it this is something I feel like God gave me for y'all so I hope y'all will reap from it God bless your hearts we'll take a break and I'll see you upstairs is, I guess I could ask has anybody got a question before we go did I I must have did a good job all right God bless your hearts I'll see you upstairs